and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dr. Latrice Montgomery and the purpose of this channel is to discuss marijuana from a scientific perspective and a host of other research related activities. So thank you so much for joining and today I just want to take a few minutes to talk to you about blunts. Most of my research focuses on blunts, so I want to share three facts and just things that you may not necessarily know about blunts just to raise awareness. So let's jump right in. What is a blunt? So a blunt is a hollowed out little cigar, cigarillo, I'll just call it LCC for the rest of the video. It's a hollowed out LCC, so basically you take the tobacco out and you replace it with marijuana, roll it back up and smoke it. And so that is really what the focus of my research is on because I look specifically at marijuana and tobacco use and co-use. And so blunt use is actually an example of co-administration where a person is actually exposed to both marijuana and tobacco at the same time. So that's actually a nice segue into the first little known fact about blunts is that blunts have a quantifiable level of nicotine within them. And this is actually a little known fact because oftentimes people believe that if they remove all of the tobacco out of the blunt, that they have no exposure to nicotine. But unfortunately, and that's not true. And so one of the things that I want to note is a study that was recently done by a friend and colleague that showed that looking at cigar products that are commonly used to make blunts, such as Dutch Masters, Philly Blunts, White Owl, Swisher Sweets, Black and Mouth, when you look at those and look at those in the lab and just look at the wrapper alone, they found that there's 1.2 to 6 milligrams of nicotine within each wrapper. So that means that even if a person removes all of the tobacco out of their blunt, they're still being exposed to nicotine through the wrapper. So, second thing you may not necessarily know about blunts is that the products or the LCCs that are used to make blunts are very similar to that of alcohol. And as you know, in the African American community in particular, there are a huge proportion of liquor stores that are there. And the African American community is targeted by the alcohol industry in that way. And so in the same way that we're likely to see, more likely to see liquor stores in the corner of minority communities relative to other communities, that's the same thing that's happening with the tobacco products not only with menthol cigarettes, but also with LCCs, particularly flavored products. And so there are many different tactics that the tobacco industry uses to try to target minority communities with these products. They are not only targeting minority communities, but they're also targeting communities with high proportions of young adults and high proportion of low-income residents. And so again, just some of those same strategies and tactics that we are familiar with and that we hear about related to menthol cigarettes and to alcohol, particularly in the African American community, those same things apply to LCC products. Number three, something that you may not necessarily know. And this is an area that I spend a lot of time in just because as I mentioned, I am a researcher and most of my research focuses on blunts. So with blunts, they can be very difficult to study. So if you remember from, from one of my previous videos, I talked about marijuana use and I talked about research and some of the barriers that we face. And so therefore, there's not as many studies as we would like there to be in this space. But when we talk about blunts in particular, the number is even smaller in terms of the studies that are being uh, conducted or that have been conducted. And there are several reasons for that um, and several things that need to be worked out in this area um, of research. And one is some around some of the issues that I talked about before. So how do you identify a blunt smoker? So for example, in some surveys that are currently available, you may ask a person if they smoke cigars and they may say, no, I don't. But later on, if you ask someone if they smoke blunts, they'll say, yes, I do. And so people may not necessarily acknowledge it themselves or think of themselves as a tobacco user, but they might only see themselves as a marijuana user. So we have to make sure that our questions are accurate and that we're actually capturing what's happening in the community and how people view themselves and the behaviors that they engage in. Another thing to think about is that when we think of blunt use in particular, people use blunts in so many different types of ways. And so the way that one person rolls their blunt up, how much marijuana a person uses, what type of products they use, how much tobacco that is left inside of it because not everyone removes all of the tobacco out of their blunt. 
so there's so many different things. The potency of the marijuana that's in the blunt. There's so many different factors that makes it very difficult to study. Because as I mentioned in my previous video, with alcohol, there is a standard dose. We can look at alcohol and say, you know, we all can agree on what a standard drink is. But we don't have that same kind of standard process with blunt, so that makes it very difficult. So there are some challenges, but the good news is that despite these challenges, the number of studies on blunts have uh, increased over the past few years. I'm excited to say that I've been a part of that increase and plan to continue to be a part of that increase and that I have several colleagues who are working in this space. So all of that to say, whether you're a clinician, a researcher, a student, just out in the community, if you have any interest in learning more about blunts or things that you want to contribute, things that you think that I and other researchers should know about blunts so that we can adequately study this issue, please let me know. Please feel free to leave it down in the comments because I'm excited and definitely want to hear from you and hear your thoughts on this issue. Again, these are just three little known facts about blunts. I'm pretty sure there are plenty of other things that I could discuss and talk about. So let's take an opportunity to do that within the comments. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time when we will discuss all things weed.